Yeah, I'm the Cypress Bridge on Carver. Alright, we just drove by. We just drove by there. Okay, All right. we'll, okay. we'll swing through there. So we are the Crisis Intervention Response Team. We uh, are a multidisciplinary team, uh, including the Reading Police Department and Shasta County Mental Health, HHSA, and we work together in providing solutions to the community for people in crisis or homeless individuals. Hi guys. Ready to keep crisis team. Can we make sure the dog eats all good? Look, I got here. What's puppy's name? Loki. Hi Loki. I'm Hi Loki. Hey, uh, Josh told us, Officer Tracy told us that you're looking to talk with us. What we do, oftentimes between calls for service, uh, we respond to homeless encampments and provide outreach. We partner up with other agencies so that we can actually uh, refer people to specific places to meet their specific needs. We have spent hours and hours uh, just providing them with resources, trying to get to know their stories, uh, trying to figure out what is stopping them from uh, thriving. What's that? They're, they're rooms through the transitional housing and it's sober living, so you, okay. you just got to okay, test. So you don't have to be clean going in, but you, you have to... You're a veteran? Oh, perfect. Bye. They said, they said if you can get over there in the next 15 minutes, they can help you out. Oh, we can definitely get there that fast. I'll walk with you. It's literally right over... It's right just across the bridge. So Dawn is ready to be housed cool. right now. Uh, Do you want to just give her a ride um, without me? Um, to be bridged. Okay. All right, now. I love right. you, fam. Hey, your new life has just begun. Take care, for sure. <laughs> Reading Police Department modeled our unit after the San Antonio Police Department's model for their crisis team, uh, which includes dressing in plain clothes. Uh, we don't have badging or markings on us that indicate that we're law enforcement. The goal is, is that we can be more approachable and um, allow for people in crisis to communicate with us to try to help them get through the crisis safely. So basically what, what just happened was we got information that there were people under the Cypress Bridge who were interested in housing. Uh, we contacted a uh, lady by the first name of Dawn. I've known Dawn for a long time. Uh, I've dealt with her when I was on patrol, probably known her for you know at least five years right now and she right away told me that she was interested in uh, getting off the streets. Uh, she has been uh, detoxing from drugs, so uh, she has already made that commitment to get clean and get sober. So she's already you know, on her way uh, to that, and that's the kind of commitment we're looking for. Uh, and uh, so basically what we do is we bring them to the hospital to make sure that uh, the detox is you know, managed medically. And then uh, we already have a spot available for her in uh, uh, transitional housing. So that's where we're gonna be uh, taking her after she gets medically cleared from here. Our team was started back in September of 2021. And the idea behind the team was to aid uh, patrol uh, with situations that involved uh, people in crisis, and that may be because of mental illness, uh, because of non-compliance with um, psych medication, uh, substance abuse, uh, or any situation or any event that would make a person feel or act out of control. Uh, so our team often responds to situations which signify the worst day in somebody's life. We do not get called when people are having a good day. We get called when people are usually at their worst. Hey, yeah. hey, I'm here to help you. Thank you, please come in here, please. How, how do we get in? Where is it, where is it? To the police? Yeah, we're with the law, we're law enforcement. Look at the hanging off my hair right now. Look okay. Me. Here's some more, there's blue, is it? Come look at this. Let me see it. I, oh yeah, there's one in there. Okay, yeah, those are... Thank you for coming. Hey, you're, you're welcome. Do you want to go get checked out for these, see if they've affected you at all? Oh, they have. I know, so you want to go to the hospital? Yes, please. Okay, let's... Look at... We can get you there. Okay, there's more. Okay. But the problem, is, the problem is, is we have to have an ambulance come for you because we don't have room to fit you in our car. Is that okay? Please, we can't. Stop calling. LSU for one. I don't know what else... What's that from? Yes, I just told me... 
She's come on 27, code 4, but can we uh, get medical uh, code 1 to our location? She believes that bugs have infested her apartment and are all over her. She she was actively seeing bugs uh, crawling on her, on her feet, falling off of her while we were with her, um, which is obviously not reality. So um, we're placing her on a mental health fold um, for danger to yeah, self. She can't take care of herself. Yeah. We're actually coming with you, okay? We're gonna be in this car right behind you, making sure that you're totally good, okay? I think that we fill in a huge gap uh, that was needed for many, many years. Before, uh, there was no solution. Uh, there was a need and everybody knew that maybe uh, regular uniformed police officers were not the answer, but there was nobody else. When somebody is having a crisis, sometimes the only option is to call 911. And uh, when you call 911, uh, you're going to get uniformed police officers. And uh, even though we are all trained in crisis response, it is a completely different response when you have somebody come in in plain clothes that appears more approachable. With specialized uh, training. With specialized training, with emphasis on de-escalation and problem solving. What do you guys like about this job? What do you guys like about our team? It is really amazing how many community partners that we've, we've had to partner up with just in order to make this happen for each person. It's incredible how many friends we have, have made over, over time. We're the beginning, um, but it's really interesting and it's really rewarding to, uh, to go through the journey with them and obviously see you know the end product. Uh, I like the ability to find a person that is in a uh, crisis or in need and finding a way to positively change this person's life by using you guys as well as our friends that we've made in the community through resources that allow us to interject ourselves into somebody's life that's maybe in crisis and completely change the trajectory of where they're going. So where did you start at before here? Uh, before here I was in the Nurpon open space right there on the river. Okay. How long did you camp there for? Uh, this time since I've been out. Yeah. So I got released about seven months ago. Okay. So and so you were in prison for a little bit. For a little bit. Okay. Before that, it was twelve years homeless. Okay. Yeah. So twelve years homeless. You went to prison, and then you spent uh, seven months in Nurpon. Yeah. Okay. So. And then what was kind of the turning point in Nurpon? What happened? When y'all showed up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. Tell yeah. me about it. For me, my release day wasn't a celebration. It was the day I lost hope again. There I was, alone, lost, addicted to dope, <laughs> wanting to sell drugs and make my new home along the river at Nurpon Open Space. Uh, I hated selling drugs, but I wanted clothes, I wanted food, and my pride always kept me from begging or asking for anything. I didn't even like looking homeless. And the entire time I was doing the things I never wanted to do again, I hated myself for not being able to be the dad that my kids deserved. I was mad at God for not letting me die numerous times, but one day at Nurpon, a little hope came back into my life, and hope was in the form of a man named Officer Kettle, a cop. <laughs> the enemy as I know him, you know? Rather than yell obscenities at me and call me names, chase me, harass me, he offered me a Gatorade and said that he wanted to help me get off the streets. So really, personally, thank you, Kettle, and everybody at that table. You led me to Christine at No Boundaries, and my life has far more than just hope today. I count numerous blessings each day, of which are my housing, I have employment, I'm reconnecting with my children. They call me every day. I got to visit them. I'm hanging out with them. See, if anything, I can just say that I'm living proof that this stuff works and that it will work. And No Boundaries is proof that programs and support and really giving people hope on the streets again, like that's what we need. I had no hope. I'd given up and nobody was there to do anything but chase me, arrest me, or call me names. And then when, when things got different, I had hope. And hope, and when it came in my life, I've just been catapulted ever since, you know, and I still got a long ways to go and it's never going to stop being a work, you know, but I'm today, I got peace, I'm content, I'm happy, I got kids, and I know that I'm working. And I want you to know, Henry, that stories like yours, I mean, that's what keeps us going. You know, with our jobs, our jobs sometimes are not fun, you know, a lot of days they are not fun, but we do it for stories like yours. I'm serious, like that's what makes a cop's day, like seeing the change. Now we don't have to chase you anymore, right? We don't have to put you at risk, put ourselves at risk. Seeing you doing better, seeing you being a dad, and you know, making something so amazing out of your life, that, that that's any, any cop's dream, to actually see that change. Yeah, that's huge.
proud of you. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>